Hi, I'm John the Let's Banking Systems Engineer Termel, and my message to the Occupy Movement is the Argentine solution of paying people with provincial bonds they can use for hydro taxes, medical and licenses as currency rather than lay them off. Uh, brought the same message to Occupy Toronto, <clears throat> but community currencies have been raised that Occupy Newfoundland, Occupy Albany, New York, New York, New York, uh, San Francisco, Vermont, and now London. So here is my bringing the message of the Argentine solution, how to fix money, and how my new pauper party of Ontario can use tax credits to finance the movement of the paupers with the province's own money. And the first 15 minutes is warming them up with some gypsy music. I think we should talk to City Council about supporting this as a public occupation to set an example to other countries and other cities that are cracking down very harshly. London now has an opportunity to say, look, we're going to allow this kind of public occupation without any kind of violence. There's no harm being done at this point. So I just want to remind everyone that probably the most significant issue in the world right now is that all the banks in the world are using a fiat money system that's based on absolutely nothing. And that is the only reason that these banks have the power to screw yes. everything else up. And they are pushing for a world government with very restricted freedom. And that's the key thing, is that these banks have the power of the creation of unlimited money backed by nothing. So whatever else happens, if that power does not get taken away from these few people to create the entire money supply from absolutely nothing, there's not going to be a damn thing that anyone can do to change any of it. I don't know if anyone's paying attention, but that's, it's an important thing. The most important thing. As long as the banks, when you go to a bank and you take out a loan, you're not actually borrowing that money from the bank. Your promise to pay that loan back, it's not actually a loan. That's where the money is created. When you go to the bank to take out a loan, your promise to pay is regarded as a tradable commodity and is given intrinsic value based on you, you basically signing your own life over. Oh, nice. so you have to someone timing me? Yeah, or do you just like to, to no, regulate we everything that happens? Happens. We really yeah. do it all. Well, I haven't heard anyone talk about any of these issues the entire time. I will. 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 I'm going to conclude the meeting right now. Thank you. Perfect timing. Gypsy homeless music. <laughs> I played in Toronto last weekend. We got some accordion. You just go occupy Toronto accordion. See him dancing. Hey, this machine kept me out of jail three times. <laughs> True story. Who wants some gypsy music? Homeless people music. 200 years ago. You should have seen him dancing in Toronto. I like gypsy music. There was 30, 40 people. Oh, yeah. At least. Okay, I'll tie my dock up. Okay. Once you get it rolling. Yeah. We'll start with one everybody knows. No, no, no. Hungarian gypsy music. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see my keyboard. You don't need to see it. I do gotta see my keyboard. You feel your way. All right, Gypsy. Okay, fingers are cold. Excuse the numbness. <laughs>
fingers aren't so bad. Okay, this is two guitars. It rent it ends in a flourish. <laughs>
of what we want. Now, in Argentina in 2001, they went broke. But by 2006, they paid off all their foreign debt. Well, how'd they do that? Well, the union said, you're not going to lay us off because you got no money. We'll take small denomination provincial bonds. We can use for hydro, taxes, medical, and licenses. So everybody in town took the bonds. Nobody lost their jobs. They could hire more people. And that's how Argentina went from broke in 2001 to all paid off in 2006. And it didn't make the news. So, if you look for Argentine solution, that's what I'm pushing because we can do it anywhere on the planet. And you know what's neat? If you, you two, Prime Minister of the Planet, I'm the only candidate. I'm in the Guinness Book of Records for running in more elections and losing more elections than anyone else. In 19... Here, let me, where's my book? Yeah, I'll show you my story, it's wild! Okay, I was the teaching assistant of Canada's only mathematics, a gambling course. Okay, and I'm a professional hold'em poker player at the Brantford Casino. And in my early career, I was what she, they called me Ottawa's Gambling Crusader. And I ran the first casino in Quebec, and they busted me, shut me down. Then I ran the biggest casino in Canadian history, and, and they busted me and shut me down. But I made a million bucks, and I had to, I had to spend it before they took it away under proceeds of crime. So I founded a political party, and I ran for prime minister. And then I got quote of the week. I, I knew they weren't going to let me keep it all, so I spent it all. Anyway, because I spent it all, I ran for prime minister in 2000. I got invited to the United Nations, and then they. Don't forget, I walk around the UN with this white hard hat and all my elections. So I stand out like a sore thumb, freaky stuff. But I mean, I wear the suit and I'm as orthodox the rest of me as possible to match the freakiness of the hat. But anyway, they passed resolution C6 for a time-based currency. Now, if you go to my YouTube, my Facebook page, on my info, You'll see that in 1999, I traveled to Europe, and 39 nights out of 40, I paid with an IOU for a night back in Canada. Worth five hours, because in France, they pay themselves 60 green francs an hour. In Germany, 20 green marks. In Canada, 12 green dollars for a volunteer hour. In the States, 10. But between countries, we trade hours of time. So that is the new poor people underground currency. Anybody can go set up their own time bank account, which simply promises you're going to try and put back the hours you get. 
And then anytime you owe somebody you can't pay, you simply say, I'll go say I owe you online for so many hours of work. And someone else might put you up until I can put them up. So basically, time barter is the way that we can create jobs on our own, but better yet, is if the government starts paying us with provincial bonds. Because hundreds of years ago, when our forefathers used to build the roads, they didn't have any gold. So they all got together on the weekend and they had a work bee, and that's how they paid their taxes. They got tax credits. So it's exactly the same idea. If we don't get the power to create money back from the banks so that government that didn't so sound the government good. can pay us with some good paper and HTML, hydro, taxes, medical, licenses. You know anybody who ain't going to want an Ontario provincial $10 bond that pays all of those things? No! So why should we bring our bond to a bank, a million dollar bond, to borrow a million in bills, say it weighs 100 pounds, spend it, tax it out with interest, when we can print up a million pounds in one dollar bonds, spend them, tax them out, no interest. So, want to hear a poem? Two poems I got. <laughs> the first one is on how money works, and the second one's the rich man's attitude. I'll do the rich man first. Uh, the scam first to the rich man. I don't know. Okay, rich man poem. Here it is. Because I have a million bucks, I sit upon my stern and leave my living tranquilly for other folks to earn. For in some procreative way that isn't very clear, a million bucks will breed a hundred thousand every year. So as I have a healthy hate of economic strife, I mean to stay aloof from it the balance of my life. And yet, with sympathy, I see the grimy son of toil and heartily congratulate the tiller of the soil. I like the miner in the mine, the sailor on the sea, because up to a hundred grand they sail and mine for me. For me, your toil is taxed unto the annual extent, according to the banker's law that gets me 10%. So get yourself a million bucks in any way you can and leave your future welfare to the noble working man. He'll buy you suits of Harris Tweed and Airedale in a car, your golf clubs and your morning times, your whiskey and cigar. He'll cozily install you in a cottage by a stream with every modern comfort in a garden that's a dream. Or if your taste be bourbon, he'll provide you with a flat secluded from the clamor of the proletariat with pictures, music, easy chairs, a table of good cheer. A guy can manage nicely on a hundred grand a year. And though around you painful signs of industry you view, why should you work when you can have your money work for you? So I'll get down upon my knees and bless the working man who offers me a life of ease through all my mortal span, whose loins are lean to make me fat, whose slaves to keep me free, who dies before his prime to get me round the century, whose wife and children toil and turn until their strength is spent, that I may live in idleness upon my 10%. And if at times they curse me, why should I feel any blame? For in my place, I know they'd do the very same. Though they talk of revolution on a Sunday afternoon, just offer them a million bucks and watch them change their tune. So I'll enjoy my dividends and live my life with zest. And bless the mighty men who first invented interest. <laughs> Robert Service wrote that 5% and I converted it to 10 in our money and that's uh, pretty darn good, eh? Now well here's done. the one I wrote. Remember, that's well Robert done. Service. In 93 now, I wrote this poem and because I was running for Prime Minister, Much Music had a show called Talk Me To Your Leader and they had a Canadian musical icon interview all the candidates for Prime Minister. John Cretien, Kim Campbell, Preston Manning, and I got Randy Bachman. So I sent them all the information about Let's Time Banking, Let's is the software, and then on the show I did this poem. Let me get my props out here. I need a bill. There they are. Yes, sir. When you were little, did you ever dream of printing cash? 
filling up your wallet with some money in a flash. Creating money accurately means to have plates. The stamping of some paper into notes best demonstrates, or stamping metal into coins, or blips computerized into your bank account deposits, checks now authorized. So whether paper, metal, volts of electricity, to have the plates is printing money absolutely free. Now, if you printed it to spend, the others would be whale. They'd call it counterfeiting and they'd send you off to jail. But what if government would let you print it up to lend with only what you can collect in interest to spend? If you can print and lend a thousand out at 10%, you'd make a hundred interest on printing and you'll lend. But if you could print up and lend a million out and get an extra hundred thousand dollars for your fee on debt, if government stops using its own plates and comes to you, a billion printed nets, a hundred million revenue. With everybody being taxed to pay you interest of all the scams in history to have the plates as best. Though never spending, only lending, riches do await to all who with the plates become loan sharks to the state. And though to join the few who thus they profit, you might dream, wake up to see we're all the victims of this greatest. Though governments of old had treasury run money plates, without the interest to middlemen at ripoff rates, most governments today to banking industry have lost control of money plates. So interest is now a cost. To service debt in 99, Canada's request, that's how long I've been telling this poem, $320 billion taxed for interest. We're taxed almost $1,000 each per month yep. to pay for interest to holders of our plates they gave away. So we paupers, the name of our party, pauper party, we want to get the plates back from the banks and have Treasury create the money for just a printing charge on the poker we'll candidates in our party. thanks. Now the interest we save that Gino and Martha robbing us should be split up, I recommend, for I each to get $1,000 monthly dividend. As if you own a share in the incorporated state, an income guarantee for Blue life, man. no question, no debate. So without touching anything, not touching ideas. the tax system, sure. nothing, Amazing. just getting the plates back from the private banks and intercepting the brake truck with our cash in it, and we can give ourselves back the thousand bucks we're lifting on us every month. So, I said to Randy Bachman, would you agree control of money plates by private banks should end? With all that interest diverted to our monthly dividend? Yeah! Well, he went and helped found one of the community currencies in the West Coast, Salt Spring Island dollars. And the, you read about community currencies, you'll find out about them. But here's the neat thing now. Who here files income tax? One, Very two, good. three. Okay now. From now on, in the last election, I registered a political party. Me and Michael, the only two candidates at all took to register a party in the last day, second last day, and now we got the right to issue tax credits. Which means that all of our expenses for the movement that I come out and protest in, I can give you a tax credit worth 75% of your first 400 bucks of receipted expenses. So if you're driving here from 100 clicks away, okay, I can give you 15 cents a click on that. If you buy food, motel, anything at all, you keep your receipted expenses, nice donate them to my party, and because we approve of you being out here, Absolutely. Yeah, 75 percent of the money. What a score! We go to hey, that's the, now. Oh, I got. I if you go there. to YouTube, Popper Party, you'll find. Look for Laurie debate in the last election. Uh, my opponent, Dave Levac in Brantford. I said, Dave, now that I'm a party, just like you, I can tell the pizzeria, send me 400 bucks worth of pizza for the soup kitchen, here's a $300 tax credit. Right, Dave? And he had to go, yeah. Well, why didn't the liberals ever think of sending pizza down to the soup kitchen? It's, 
outside the box. They are looking for contributions to help their party. Printing, cash, cars, advertising, but pizza to give to the poor? Forget it. But I got a right. I got a right to accept anything I want, give it away any way I want, and I've decided that if your parents want to give you a tank of gas to send you down here to protest, I'm going to give a tax credit for their contribution and get them 75 of the money. Now, we're also setting up a gold nugget barter system. Which means that you'll be able to log on, you can join our party too, but you'll be able to log on to our barter system and list what you're willing to do. And you get an open credit line at a, a time okay? Now we got Time Bank Network in 60 countries. Like I said, 11 countries I went to out of 12 had Time Banks 11 years ago. They all got them now. Lots. So, but if you do your search, there was community currencies mentioned at Occupy Toronto, Occupy Newfoundland. I can say Occupy London now. Occupy mm -hmm. Albany, New York, Occupy New York, Occupy San Francisco, and Occupy Vermont. They're all talking about using our own community currencies as the way to hurt the banks in the world. Now, I picketed the Bank of Canada for five years. In the early 1980s, every Thursday when they raised the interest rates. Remember 22% when you were a kid? Remember how many families walked away from their empty houses? And it's coming back. If Pierre gave us 22, Justin's here to try and hit 25. Okay, <laughs> different story, you know. But So anyway, that really crucified a lot of people with interest rates. But anyway, now we got another situation where they're gonna be crippling a lot of poor people. <laughs> But, I told you about the casino that got busted, the million bucks. Well, the cops called the raid, the OPP, they called it Project Robin Hood. <laughs> okay. And now I can only say that Robin Hood's managed to tunnel into the Ontario Sheriff's vault. And I can pass out tax credits to any small business that gives me stuff. So let's take use it or lose it businesses, like a movie theater or a driving range or uh, any kind of a rental, motel rooms. The law in Ontario says that they can get $1,250 tax credit cash if they give us 2,800 bucks in empty rooms. And if he's an owner and a corporate, he can get back 2,500 if he gives us 5,600 in empty rooms. All we do is put his name on our list and then tell our members, go oh, use your gold nuggets in his motel. So, if he were willing to donate the motel over there, if he had empty rooms, we could say after 11 o'clock, except our people, and that means people parked out here can zoom in there once a week and have a shower, you know, spend one night a week in a motel, because he contributed, but it's Ontario government paying for it. That's the key. We now got access to Ontario government tax credits, and I'm gonna bring in, I can bring in old stock, if they're going to have an 80% sale after Christmas, hey, want 44 cents on the dollar? Give it to my party so I can give it to the Sally Ann. So I now have this ability to give tax credits to every small business and to bring, that means that any four people who start a constituency association in their own hometowns can start collecting goodies and paying themselves a minimum of 12 nuggets an hour that they can go spend in those stores. And that's how we're going to fund the anti-bank movement in Ontario, I think, eventually, by using the province of Ontario's own money to buy goodies to reward our volunteers. Because right now, I can get take all of your expenses, every one of you put your hand up, file returns, and I can give you three quarters up to the first 400, and then about 50%. 44 could next 3,000. So, think about that. I mean, all those expenses could now be covered and get money back in a spot in your return you never did before just by supporting the right movement. So, if you don't file taxes, go to your parents. Say, hey, you're contributing to my effort to do this. You buy my tank of gas and I'll give you the tax. Get it? So, you can do this for anybody who's helping you. So, I got some flyers here and I'll leave them with you, okay? Explaining how it works. 
But, I mean, to give a small business the opportunity to score 2500 bucks and getting rid of 5600 in use it or lose it product. Because if people don't go to see that movie like yesterday, he's not going to ever rent those chairs again. So he may as well, on a slow night, let us come in and take our nuggets. So, now, here's how I used to sell my system 20 years ago. It was a discount trading system. I walked up to a businessman and I said, hey, you know, a discount coupon, usually you got to pay to print it, distribute it, and you lose the discount. How about we print it, we distribute it. I said, how about we print it, we distribute it. Anyway, I thought to myself, I see these pages of coupons in a newspaper. And I say, is that ever stupid? Why don't they take one coupon and put 30 names? Each with their discount. Right? Then I said, you know, I could do better than that. I could take one coupon with no names and I could append a list of a thousand stores. So every coupon works in every store and you got no wasted coupons and minimum print job. So I built up a system with a thousand stores that would simply give me discounts. Now I'm walking in, I'm saying the same deal. Will you give me 10% discount? Yeah. Well then how about taking 10% barter bucks, which you could re-spend in the next guy's store. Even better now, right? And if you want, you can give my party a contribution and you can get half your money back as well. So that is the machinery that I'm known as John the Engineer. Okay. And like I said, I was a teaching assistant of Canada's only mathematics and gambling course. And I'm the best limit hold'em poker player in the world. And I've invented all the poker power tools. Anybody here play poker? Yeah. Yeah. You say, eh? So, this is my book, Play Hold'em Poker Like a Bookie. Now, how many of you guys heard of uh, Daniel Negrianu? Right? Come on, he's a Canadian kid, won all the tournaments in Vegas. Right, Daniel? Let's see now. So, party leaders. Here it is. This is a book called Canadian Gamblers by Jack Players, Canadian Poker Players. There's Daniel Negriano, the most famous poker player in Canada. And there's John C. Termel right in front of him. <laughs> there it is. Just aim it. Okay, where was I now? Oh, 1979. Now, I, I started running games and they kept busting my games because I wanted to legalize gambling. So anyway, I ran for parliament to legalize gambling. And then people ask me about inflation. And I said, well, how come my casino chips don't lose their value ever? Always worth the same thing. And the government's chips lose the other The hardware's the same. What's going on? It means inflation must be a software problem which can be corrected with a programming change at the bank's computers. So I did an advanced engineering analysis, and if you look for the words bank math, you'll find it from grade 9 algebra to exponential functions and control systems. And I found, if you Google for big lie of economics, that's the code words too, the big lie of economics is when they say they use interest rates to fight inflation. Now what... What kind of moron is going to believe that when they raise a producer's costs, he's going to pass it along in lower prices? But they repeat it so many times, the suckers just believe it. Every time you see inflation, you look now and you notice, oh, interest fights inflation, interest coming, interest rate medicine. And yet, only an idiot can think raising the cost is going to lower the prices. But they just keep repeating the backward stupid lie so many times that people forget it can't be true. If they're going to raise the costs of a manufacturer, he ain't going to pass it along in lower prices. It's just really stupid. So now, now I'm the discoverer of Shift B inflation. I claim the fame. I'm going to get three Nobel Prizes someday, and I knew it in advance. Well, come on, if you, you invent something, you know what's there, it's special, you know. Basically, here's my miracle equation. Grade 9 algebra. Ten guys put up their watch as collateral. I give you all 10 liters of liquidity, money, you go dump it in the economic pool, and you all got to come back with 11 plus interest to the pump house to get out of debt, and you watch back, okay? Okay, at the end of the game, nine guys come out with 11 chips, right? And the 10th guy got squeezed out of his mortgage, which means death gamble in French. Mortgage, death gamble. 
just like musical chairs. Everybody borrows 10, everybody owes 11, automatic poverty, someone always gets foreclosed. Now, the number of guys who get knocked out, well, I figured out the equation for it. And they're the number of guys who get their collateral seized, resulting in the same money chasing less collateral, not more money chasing the collateral. So, back to the math again. Everybody borrowed 10. 10 guys times 10, the principal is equal to 100. Everybody owes 11. The debt is P plus I, 110. Well, what ratio can survive? Well, you got 100 bucks, you owe 110. 100 out of 110 will make it. What ratio get knocked out? Well, the money you ain't got, the 10 out of 110 get knocked out. The ratio who get knocked out of the game, I over P plus I, interest over principal plus interest, get their watch seized, resulting not in more money, more money chasing the 10 watches, but the same money chasing 9 watches. Economics teaches only inflation is more money up over here. They don't teach down over there. Imagine that. A science that only teaches it's got to be up over here, but nobody look at down over there. Well, I'm the discoverer of down over there. And I've proven it. In Argentina, they had a thousand percent inflation rate. And the unions all started printing up the bonds I told you about. And the central bank said, oh, with all these new chips, there's going to be more inflation. And inflation went from a thousand percent down to 36%. Because remember, if inflation is the number of guys who are getting knocked out of the game because of the interest rates, reducing the interest rates and putting more money in circulation means less guys go broke. More guys pay their debts, less shift B seizure, less inflation. And inflation went from 1,000% to 36% by printing more money. And we're taught that printing more money always causes inflation. And I'm telling you, printing more money for paychecks backed up by labor fights inflation. So, that is the big lie of economics. All the money reformers out there, Ron Paul, they all got that one backwards. They all can't say we got to print more money for paychecks because they think there's already too much. They think, hey, if you print more money, there'll be more inflation without realizing that we're suffering. Hey, they always show us the pictures of the guys running around Germany with the wheelbarrows of money, remember that? And then the empty store shelves. Well, have we got that or do we have empty wallets and full store shelves? We got the opposite. So it ain't too much money that we're suffering. It's too much foreclosure. And that's a function of the interest rate. So we got to abolish interest rate, run money like poker chips. But since most people can't stay with that, we explain the Argentine bonds. If you YouTube for Argentine solution, you'll find my videos explaining it over and over and over in two minutes that Argentina was busted in 2001, all debt paid off 2006. How? Unions took small denomination bonds. Everybody kept their jobs, hired more, all debts paid off. We can do it too. So anyway, I'll have, I'll give you some literature because I'm leaving town. I'm from Brantford. I'll be at Occupy Toronto tomorrow. But you're going to have a website you'll be able to go by next week and look into getting tax credits. Look, it, if you admit you're poor and you're not ashamed of it because you know it's a stacked game, well, then you can join our. How many people want to join a party that calls itself poor? Like, can I share okay, not too many. So, I don't mind admitting I'm poor because I scare people. I, I'm a guy with a systems engineering degree and I'm the best poker player on the planet and I'm a hundred times sharper than they are. And so they're scared of me when I say I'm poor, you know. So there are other bright poor guys out there, Buster. So that's basically what we've done. So I'm going to give you some information about the gift certificates and if you guys want to get involved, stay tuned. You'll be able to log on to our party site and then print out gift certificates and then sign up merchants to give stuff to your riding association and you keep 10%. Your tithe for scoring the contribution. And then we have all this stuff we can start distributing to poor people and won't that be a fun job.
So anyway, I'm talking everything. Chinese food, butcher shops. We ask them all, give us your last 20, your last stuff at the end of every week down to the, you know, soup kitchen. So they eat it and we'll just knock them off in gold nuggets. So anyway, all this is going to be online within a week. And so popperparty.ca, keep track boys. And I'm going to upload this video probably later tonight of what I said to you guys here and uh, earlier to the concert. And uh, <laughs> I can only say they never expected poor people to tap into the government's own cash. So now you guys got an opportunity to safety all your friends and neighbors and small businesses by building up the biggest barter system they ever saw in their lives. And what gets them started is the tax credit as the lure. But other than that, you know, if you're going to give me a 10% discount for coming in, you may as well take 10% barter bucks, even better, right? So that's how easy that is. So let me give you some flyers now. So you know what I'm talking about. Now, let's say you had, let's say you had your gas receipts here. Okay, well I would make you sign this here, gift certificate, and then you'd give me the gas receipts and I'd give you the tax credit. Now on the back, there is proof that we're a political party. There are the rules that say goods and services are contributable. You're not allowed to be paid with tax credits for your time, but you may be paid for your out-of-pocket expenses. That's hotel, motel, food. So you kids start keeping every receipt from now on because I saw you here, I know who you are, and when you do log on to our site eventually, you'll be able to create your own one-hour bills with your picture on it. My okay. face on money? Your own. It's like a check. If you, you sign a check without your face imagine your face and then rather than go cash it right away they reuse it because it's a convenient 12-hour bill 12 nugget bill and they just use it around until it gets old then they put it in now in Mexico to avoid counterfeiters they made the first 10 people who took it sign on the back here's the reasoning if I come in and I sneak in a fraudulent one but then 10 people now do deals to do a hundred bucks worth of action they, really, they won't feel so bad finding at the end that it's no good and they got to write off 10 when they did a hundred in volume so we're not really too worried about counterfeiters and stuff like that anybody can print their own and I've the experience with these lead systems that's the name of that software is that most people won't stiff you for an hour at a time. So every bum who'd stiff you for a $20 bill, and we all know them, okay, won't stiff you for a couple of hours of help. Because he wants your respect. Everybody wants our respect, okay? There are no bums. Well, no. Everybody would prefer to be respected than not. And when they join a time bank, it's so easy not to be a bum that no one ever is. Everybody has always honored their debts and are happy to do it because it's comforting to know you got a network of people you can call on where you don't need money. You know, the drain breaks. You know a plumber? Well, yeah, the Let's has got a plumber. You know, and he's getting his big kids babysat by the music teacher who's getting her. Blah, 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 blah. That's it. So, time bomb. And the faster we set it up, remember, in Africa right now, in they pay they transfer stuff with cell phone minutes transfer 10 cell phone minutes from my account to his they got no bank accounts and they lose no interest on cell phone minute money transactions like they did when they used banks now why would they be allowed to use cell phone minutes as currency in africa and the third world and not us why can't we transfer cell phone minutes to pay stuff? Because we still got a lot of wealth the banks want to steal. We're not dispossessed yet, like Africa is. Africa's dispossessed, all belongs to 1% of the rich people, nothing left to steal from the poor people, so there are no bank accounts for poor people, but they all got a mobile phone. And now they've learned to transfer credits on their mobile phone because Muammar Gaddafi wired Africa. Spent the money to wire Africa so they'd have their own satellites, and he's the reason they can transfer cell phone minutes. Yay, Moamar, my hero. They murdered Moamar. I did a poem on Moamar. I mean, uh, let's see if I got it. Ah, too deep, too deep. It's on the internet all over the place. Just look for Ode to Gaddafi, and I spell him Gaddafi. 
That's how his book is spelled, G-A-T-H-A-F-I. Why do they spell them all these other ways so people can't find them? Yeah. Anyway, he was, a, he was a great man and uh, they murdered him and Canada participated and Stephen Harper wants another 30,000 million in warplanes to keep going and bomb Africa and another 13,000 million in prisons. You don't know those numbers are out there, eh? 30,000 million in new warplanes and he ain't got a couple of million for health care. Okay? So anyway, it's an evil system, but all we have to do is get off it. And like Africa, like Let's, like Ithaca Hours, every deal you do with barter or another currency, banks get no interest. And that's what's withering. And that's why they're all collapsing, because the poor people are getting off and they're finding alternate ways to do exchanges with alternate currencies. And the best one is the one hour bill emailed on the internet, like I use. So, here's a sheet with the information on how it works. And uh, if you guys ever find somebody who wants to get a gift certificate, put your name on it and you get the 10% commission. And I'm saying if you find a pizzeria who's gonna give the group 400 in pizza for 300, that's 40 for you in pizza. Don't tell me that ain't worth a good score. And if he gives us three grand in pizza... Oh, let me explain the neatest thing of all. Let's say that the guy's got to give us 2800 to get 12 He's going to lose 16 Okay, 44 cents on the dollar. We say, tell you what, sure, you're going to get 12 lose 16 on the 28 you give us. How about if we buy another 28 in cash? Better? Well, guess what? The 56% discount is cut in half if we buy twice the volume. And all he's got to do is take 50-50 green gold nuggets and cash. Now we can say, hey, if 28% is still too high, well, how about taking 25% gold nuggets, 75% cash, and now you get four times the volume for the same $1,600 loss, and that's only 14% discount. So, by varying the, and gasoline bar. You got a gas bar, high overhead. Tell you what, give us the, the 2,800 and we'll buy 28,000 in gas. 10% gold nuggets, 90% cash. So it's only a 5.6% loss to the guy to have 28,000 in sales by giving us 2,800 in free gas and the government gives them back 1,200 in cash. So, it's all explained there. This is an opportunity for all of us to get wealthy in underground money, okay? And it's about time poor people got a little bit wealthy, especially if you're fighting for the right cause. Now, in my early career, if you Google for bank fighter extraordinaire, I come up. Because I used to help poor people stall their foreclosures in the courts. Legal paper, you know. I've been busted so many times gambling, and I defended myself. I learned how to use the courts. And you can appeal, appeal, and appeal to stall a conviction. Well, I learned you can appeal, appeal, and appeal to stall a foreclosure. And I kept people in their homes for three years, rent free. Okay, so that's why they call me bank fighter extraordinaire, and bank basher, and interest rate protester. And I pick it in the bank in Canada every Thursday, five years. Every bank in Canada across the country. All the big demos, Battle in Seattle, Philadelphia, Birmingham, UK, Cologne, Windsor, Quebec City, I was there, always with my sign of all interest rates, fixed money. So now, I have tax credits since the end of the election. I can now finance any poor enterprise I want. So you guys got the chance to build yourselves a club. And Michael here was the candidate in London. He lives here. So you got a very responsible sickle. Oh, by the way, he's a marijuana exemplar. He can smoke. He could pull out a joint and smoke it right now. He did. <laughs> and he's in court now. He's in court fighting his charges. And they seized his car. They want to make him walk. And we're going to be back on November the 8th in Superior Court. So, uh, so anyway, if you guys want to get involved in building yourselves a machine, I created the machinery. There's how it works. It's as easy as starting your own constituency association with a financial officer who will be able to take care of the gift certificates and the tax credits. So, John the Engineer Termel, Popper Party of Ontario, and uh, it was a pleasure being at Occupy London. But before you guys settle in for the big long, I'd give thought to changing it to a weekly. 
because you might want to fan out and go set up your constituency associations and then just come back here and have meetings on weekends with a march. Okay, I I can't imagine trying to camp out full time through a winter, yeah. you know. And besides, it'll drive them nuts, and they might come at you for no reason. But if you come back on a Friday night camp, one night maybe, and then do a march on Saturday, they'll leave you alone forever. By spring, it'll gather. Yeah, it, there'll be more people. So and do do the contemplate. Thing and start again do contemplate a long term commitment, but on weekends and during the weeks, we're at home getting our goodies organized in our storehouses because the poppers are going to rise. Yep. Thank we're in, you. We're in this to the Okay. So, what are your names, every? Oh, good question. You heard about the Argentine bonds? Sure would did. you work? Would you take a paycheck in Argentine bonds? Take a raise? Would you take a raise in Argentine bonds? Would you work for bonds? Would you work yes, for sir. bonds? Most would you? Definitely. Absolutely. I think we all would. Okay. Pleasure. I'll have this up within a couple of days. Just look for Occupy London. Uh,